Ladies and gentlemen, it's not a science fiction movie. Although, although Mia does love some sci-fi. Do you? Sure do. Is is it Star Trek that's your favorite? Star Trek, yeah. I mean, I like Star Wars, but Star Trek is goaded. You know, it's 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 really one or the other for most fans. It's either you like one and you are okay with the other or or nothing. Like it's 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 you either like Star Trek or you like Star Wars and and you can only really be a true a true fan of one. True. This is this is correct. Okay. Well, this is almost I would say this is probably more of a Star Trek type thing than a Star Wars. I mean, because but, it's scientific. But like Star Wars, you know, the Death Star will be shooting planets and, you know, blowing them up. Yeah, but this is not shooting and blowing anything up. This is trying to scientifically study and change the, tra- the trajectory. Did I say that right? Trajectory of a comet hurling towards Earth. Now, in this case, I don't think this comet was actually hurling towards Earth. Correct? Correct. It is the one that we're talking about was actually, if I remember correctly, orbiting another larger asteroid and both of those are orbiting our sun within our solar system currently. Did I get that correct? Yes. NASA has launched what they call DART, which was a uh, scientific mission with a probe designed to see if we can possibly intercept comets that are heading towards Earth and move them the heck out of the way. Is that basically, have I have I hit the nail on the head there? Basically, that's what it is. Okay, so tell us a little bit about what you know about the DART program. Okay, so they launched it in November of 2021, and um, it just hit uh, September, well, this month. And um, so they did that in order for the, like it was a moon of another asteroid, like a moon is something that orbits around something else. So they did it to hit the little one. And they did it on this date to make sure that it was, like, furthest away from Earth, but also to get the best view telescopically of the effect. Okay, so let's lay it out for anyone who might have been confused by Mia's explanation there. We launched this probe uh, over a year ago, and it took a year to get less than a year almost a year and it they it took a, a little while to actually get into orbit or to get in position the way nasa wanted the 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 probe to be aligned with the comet so that we could view it from earth and actually see what's happening <laughs> ashton just yawned at the he camera did. while we're he's telling not, this really he's not ex- a nerd Okay, uh, we then shot this, we, we crash landed this probe into, like at a really, really high, high rate of speed into the comet to see if we can knock it slightly off course. And it's the second part of the mission. The first part of the mission was to actually hit the comet, which is no easy feat because the thing is traveling really, really fast. The second part of the mission is to actually measure what is happening to the comet after we've hit it to see if we were able to shove it out of the way or its current orbit to see if we could actually do this in the future correct correct do you remember how much this thing cost a lot of money 325 million dollars <laughs> say it again 325 million dollars now ashton to most Americans, that's going to seem like a waste of money until there's actually a planet killing comet headed towards Earth and we need to do something about it. Then that would be considered money well spent. Right. So we're going to see the, the first part of the mission was very successful. A few days ago, DART crashed into the comet. We are now going to see what happens as we get measurements back from DART to see if it actually knocked this comet off course. I think it's fascinating that we are able to do this because if you consider how many, is it like millions of miles an hour these things are traveling, like it's going really, 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 really fast. And I don't want to like say anything incorrectly, but I know that they're going at such a high rate of speed that actually making them, making this thing impact the asteroid is 
it really really tough and they had i can't remember how many cameras it said but there was a lot of telescopes seven uh there was a lot of different cameras on this thing to actually make sure it made contact it sent over 200,000 images to actually calibrate itself to actually knock into this thing so it's going to be interesting to see what happens for sure like would you want to get wiped out by a comet i didn't think so that's what this is for now while we're talking about space mia i had another thing to talk to you about do you like fast internet do you have fast internet at your house yes high speed internet yes do you know what your current provider is at&t at&t i wish i could still get good high speed at&t but I currently mean, it'd it's be, not available in my neighborhood it'd be a little mm, sometimes but for the yeah. most part it's high speed i currently have c spire because oh they give us the got, right it? they give that's, us that's what the school has when we when we lose wi-fi yeah. yeah but i don't typically lose it at the house for whatever reason the schools always goes out and the house doesn't. But uh, I will say, uh, have you heard of Starlink? Are you a fan of Elon Musk? No. I mean, he do the Tesla and stuff. He makes a lot of money. Are you familiar with Starlink, the program that he has put into space? Is that the one where they take people to the... No, that's not that one. No, that's SpaceX. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> As a part of SpaceX, he started another company called Starlink. Are you familiar with Starlink? No. Okay. Starlink is a satellite internet provider, and he has been putting a crazy amount of satellites in space. If you look up into space right after a SpaceX launch of Starlink, which they're, they're about every other week they put like 20 or 30 satellites in orbit you can see up in the night sky if you look up a line it looks like a line of stars like traveling together and that's the starlink satellites my parents are actually using starlink we're, we're some of the beta people uh, in central mississippi where there is zero internet availability years ago they used what was called hughes net you remember howard hughes from history i've seen well, howard hughes he was the really about, crazy guy i know about hughes net i don't know about the dude but well howard hughes was like this insane billionaire or whatever uh hughes net is a company from the howard hughes company portfolio and it was terrible internet so satellite internet so i've heard terrible my parents have are in central mississippi and uh, my grandmother and my uncle, they're all sharing Starlink. And the way they did it is I'm showing you an image right now. You are looking at a refrigerator that's been hollowed out, stuck in the middle of a pasture. The modem was put in the refrigerator with a cooling unit to keep the modem from overheating. And then we have the satellite piece set up on top. What's amazing is sharing that's not, it, and then they use they're using like nano they're, they're called nano beams to actually shoot the internet across to the houses which nano beams can shoot internet like up to 20 miles it's pretty amazing but those nano beams are then shooting to my grandmother's house my uncle's house and my parents lodge and the internet speeds download speeds are about 200 megabytes like fast plenty fast enough to to watch multiple TV, stream multiple TVs in the house, game. Uh, it's actually astounding. And Starlink, if you buy the equipment, which is about $500 for the equipment, if you can get on the list, everybody wants on the list, so it's the waiting list is like really, really long. But it's about $120 a month. And you just stick the satellite on your roof or in your yard, and the internet is faster than AT&T way faster than AT&T's internet. It's actually pretty close to what C Spire gives you um, through fiber. My, my prediction is if he gets the cost down, because $120 is really good price. If he gets the cost of that equipment down low enough, a lot of people will end up going to Starnet Starlink, excuse me, because you can pick the satellite up, which by the way, the satellite dish is the size of a pizza box. It's small. And it's like it, it's on a little gimbal, and it's really, really, the whole package is very small. Imagine you could go camping, you could go vacationing to the beach and take your Starlink satellite with you and have internet all the time, like really, really high-speed internet. I think that mobility <clears throat> will get a lot of people to switch, and the price, especially if his price ends up being cheaper than other people's price. What do you think? I think that it's cool to be able to take the internet but then it also takes away the the whole magic of 
let's get away instead of you know getting away going camping without the internet you know you, you got to get away from it not let's get let's pack up the satellite dish in the camper i don't know seems cool though i picked the one student in horn lake high school who's not interested in taking the internet with her to do anything because i promise you that ashton behind this camera right here if he's going to go camping for a week and he has the option to take a pizza box size internet dish with him to watch tv and game He's going to be taking Starlink with him. Yeah, but mainly I want to use it for the game. For the game. Of course, the game. The game. The game. Uh, so, anyway, interesting fact. We just wanted to talk about Starlink since we were also talking about uh, Dart. Dart. Not quite as cool as Dart. I mean, Dart is crash Pretty landing cool. into a comet and changing the trajectory. The trajectory. Man. That's a we should put that as a featured vocabulary word trajectory. of the week. Trajectory. Trajectory. This week's featured vocabulary word is trajectory. Look, it's actually Mia who does that. So everybody's like, oh, that is her voice. Hi. This week's featured vocabulary word is trajectory. Say it. Trajectory. Trajectory. trajectory.